There is one thing you can do that will significantly improve both your listening skills and speaking skills in English. In this video, I'm going to tell you what it is and how to do it. Hello, this is Keith from English Speaking Success. And if you didn't know, I also run the website, The Keith Speaking Academy. Great, so listen, let's cut to the chase. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you straight away um, the one thing you can do to improve both your listening and speaking skills. And this is it. You need to be using a combination of top-down strategies and bottom-up <laughs> strategies. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Great. So you can go now. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. What? Are you still here? What's the matter? Oh, oh you want to know what top-down and bottom-up strategies are? Okay, fair enough. And how to use them? Yeah, okay, let me tell you in this video. In fact, let me go the extra mile. Let me tell you also at the end, I'll give you a bonus. I'm gonna tell you some of the best TV series that you can be watching to improve both your listening and speaking skills. Oh, and a nice place where you can find lots of listing materials, nicely organized, easy to access, it's one of my favorite mobile apps, Woodpecker Learning. More about that shortly. Let's dive in to those strategies. Okay, let's begin with this top-down listening strategy. So top-down strategy is a bit like when a bird is flying and they're looking down, they can see everything. That's why in English we say a bird's eye view. To have a bird's eye view is to look down and see everything. Basically, you're looking at the bigger picture, or maybe I should say listening to the bigger picture, okay? It's really important you are not trying to pick up and understand every word. Just get the gist. The gist is the general idea. It's important because so many students try to understand every word, and when they can't, they get frustrated and often they just can't see the wood for the trees. That's a good expression. Can't see the wood for the trees it means they're looking at so many, so many details. They don't see the bigger picture. They don't understand what's happening. So the first top down strategy is to just listen for the main idea. OK, let me show you an example. I'm going to show you a very short clip um, from a, a new series and see if you can get the main idea. Let's have a listen. But as each new day pummels us with a seemingly endless onslaught of fresh horrors, we must not lose faith. After all, this is America, where opportunity awaits around every corner. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Yeah, just put her in the coffin too. They're, they're both pretty small. All right, you get a feet. And we will take this from the top. Hope. Right, so you may have got the main idea that here, well, there's a man speaking to other people, trying to motivate them and get them to follow him. Somebody dies and there's a bit of silence and possibly humour. Now, probably you're using two things to help you get the main idea. You're using your existing knowledge. Maybe you know this man is a priest because of the, the uniform and a priest. Well, what do they do is they talk and give ideas to the, the audience or the crowd. The correct word is the congregation. Um, they talk about faith and they try and get the crowd to follow him. The second thing you may be noticing are some key words, words like lose faith. He's talking about faith. America. This is America maybe 100 or 150 years ago. Um, amen. You may have heard that word. Amen is a word we use in the mass. It just means I agree. And coffin. Coffin is the box for the dead people. 
So the woman falls over, she dies. <laughs> he says, put her in the coffin. She is small as well. So there's a bit of humour or comedy there. It's very dry comedy, but you may sense something funny is happening. So you're getting the main idea using your existing knowledge, using some keywords. Um, and this, it's really important. I think using this strategy is important at the beginning of a listening and whenever the scene changes. So when there's a new scene, you just want to float up high, look down, listen for the bigger picture. The other thing you can do, the second top-down strategy, is use the context to give you clues. So what do I mean by the context of the listening? Well, it may be the title of the listening or some images or scenes, things within the picture that can help you. For example, if we're going to watch a clip and we see this, um, this scene, right? Have a look at this. Now, this context, you can see it looks like a hospital, possibly a place of surgery. Um, there seem to be two people in white coats, probably doctors. So this context is giving us some clues about what is probably happening. What could they be talking about? Maybe a new medicine, maybe a patient, maybe an operation that's going to happen, right? So this context is kind of the top down. We're looking to see how this can help us understand the main idea. Let's watch the clip and see if you can get the main idea. What I want you to do is use the context, your knowledge of hospitals and any keywords that pop up. All three top down strategies. Let's try. You get that consent on 104? Well, I made him a deal. He's got a meeting with Dr. Max from psychiatry at six. We'll get the consent by eight. We can operate first thing in the morning. You did pass anatomy, right, Dr. Brown? Problems in his heart, not his head. He's not psychologically ready for surgery. He will be soon. Okay, great. So the main idea, it seems to be two doctors talking about surgery for a patient, basically. So some of our guesses were correct. Some of the key words I heard were psychiatry, consent, which is an agreement to have an operation, um, operate morning, so maybe operate tomorrow, ready for surgery, surgery. So I can get the main idea that they're getting somebody ready for the surgery. I also sense there's a bit of maybe disagreement between the two doctors and my knowledge of hospitals tells me that often doctors may have different opinions. Right, great. So these are top-down strategies you can be using at the beginning or at the change of scene when you're watching something. Let's move on. Next. Right, next. Bottom up strategies. <laughs> this is almost the opposite of top down. Um, this is more about listening for detail. Not necessarily every word, but getting the details you need. So this is really important if you're watching a series or a film. Um, when, when do you use this? If, for example, there's a new character in the story, you may need details. If there's a change in plot or there's a new idea being introduced, you may need the details. Or if there's a name or numbers have come up, these are typically when you need to get the details. And for me, I want to share with you three of the most important things you can do here for these, these bottom up strategies. Excuse the laughter. It always makes me laugh, bottom up. So first, um, noticing stressed words. Second, noticing intonation patterns. Third, noticing chunks. Let's take these one by one. First of all, noticing stressed words. Now, you may know that in English, we don't pronounce every word equally the same, right? Take this sentence. We don't say caffeine was an amazing aid to the rise of capitalism. 
That's not how we speak. What we say is caffeine was an amazing aid to the rise of capitalism. We stress the nouns, the adjectives, the verbs, the adverbs. Most of the other words get reduced or swallowed. They almost disappear, right? But you only need the stressed words. You only need to get caffeine, amazing aid, rise, capitalism, to get the detail that you need. So getting into the habit of noticing the stressed words will help you pick out the details. You may be thinking, that's a strange sentence. Keith, why did you choose that? I chose that because I was watching this video the other day um, and it's about food. Michael Pollan, great guy, talking about coffee. Have a look at this. Contributed to the Enlightenment and the Age of Reason and the Industrial Revolution, all of which required us to think in much more focused linear terms. Caffeine was an amazing aid to the rise of capitalism. You can go and check out that video later. Let's move on. Number two, noticing intonation patterns. Now, intonation in English is challenging, difficult. No, 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 no. Da, 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 da. Intonation is fun. It's exciting. It's changeable. It's really interesting to use intonation. I know that there are no fixed rules about it, but there are some intonation patterns that we often use that it's worth knowing. Let me share three of those intonation patterns you can be looking out for. Open questions. That's a question that is a yes, no question, right? Um, do you like it? Do you live here? Do you often go jogging? Dee -dee 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 -dee. It's a rising intonation when you have open questions. Another one, two clause sentences. For example, if I did this, I would do that. If I ate less, I wouldn't be so fat. <laughs> if I had a lot of money, I would buy a house. That rising and falling intonation. Before I go to work, I have breakfast. That's another common pattern. Let me show you another clip. It's going back to the caffeine and the coffee um, video, which I really liked. Have a listen to this. Before caffeine, basically people started work when the sun came up and stopped when it went down. Can you see that? Did -de 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 -de. Can you see that pattern? Excuse me. Can you hear that pattern? Another common one is lists, where you have a list of something and it often goes D D D D D. I like coffee, tea and butter. Butter? No. I like coffee, tea and beer. It goes up and up and on the last one it comes down. Very common. Again, let's have a look at an example. Spreading slowly from Africa through the Middle East and into the West. Interesting, right? So those are some intonation patterns you can be noticing. Number three was to notice chunks. And I talk a lot about chunks. Chunks are basically a few words together that sound almost like one word. So for example, instead of saying, did you like it? We would say, did you like it? Did you like it? It's a chunk. Did you find it? Did you enjoy it? Right? You're pronouncing it almost like one sound. Now, my tip here is that this is something you can do when you're watching videos, is listen to just one sentence and try and repeat it and try and listen to where there are chunks, these sounds, right? Then go and look at the subtitles and see if you can see the words that are making up the chunk and then practice repeating again. Let's take an example. Here's another video. This is a comedy video. It's a comedy Zoom call with some famous people. Um, let's just have a listen and I'm going to repeat or get the, the video to repeat this sentence and try and identify the sound. Okay. The food. How did you end up opening up food spots? I mean, you start with the food. How did you end up opening up food spots? I mean, you're... So I can hear how end up food spots or how end up opening food spots. And then when I look at the subtitles, I can see how did you end up opening up food spots? And if I listen some more. Start with the food. How did you end up opening up food spots? You I mean, you're. Up? How did you end up? Did you end up? Did you end up? How did you end up? How did you end up? 
that's the chunk. How did you end up? It's how did you end up? It may help you to actually write out the letters like this. How did you end up? How did you end up opening up food spots? And picking out just that one chunk and practicing it is really useful for your speaking skills as well as your listening skills. Now, you may be thinking, where are you watching this? That's not YouTube. And how do you get it to repeat all that, that sentence again and again? Well, this is one of my favorite apps, right? This is the Woodpecker app. And I love it because it brings together all of these videos um, from YouTube, but they've curated them into different playlists around entertainment, education, food, talk shows, documentaries, science, space, lots of stuff, even teachers of English which is ideal. And you can go in there. And this is the beauty, as you've seen, is as you're watching, right, if you want to repeat a phrase or a chunk, you can put it on automatic repeat. And it just goes around repeating it. You've got the transcript for every video. If you want to watch it, you don't have to. And what's more, it gets better. If you don't understand a word, you just press the word and it tells you. For example, if we're not sure about end up, I can press that phrase and look, it comes up, end up to conclude, turn out, sometimes unexpectedly. You can even add it to your history, save the word, and then export them to have a word list from the shows that you've been watching. It's an amazing app, and I think it makes learning English, well, fun and exciting. You can learn whilst watching your favorite shows, you can learn new words, you can practice your listening skills and your speaking skills as well. They have, at the last count, I think over 300,000 videos, all of them with the transcripts. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. What a great way to be learning English. So go and check them out. There is a link down below. You can download the app for free, start using it straight away. If you're on an iPad, you can access your Netflix account and you can be using the transcript feature for Netflix series as well. It doesn't get any better. Great. Woodpecker Learning. Guys, fantastic app. Well done. Thoroughly recommend it to all of my students. Now, let's move on. Now, next, as promised, this bonus is me suggesting some of the best TV series that you can be watching to improve your speaking and listening skills. Now, I've chosen these partly um, because I think they're good for learners and partly because I actually loved watching them. They were really good. What I do suggest is try not to watch the same kind of thing all the time. Now, even though you love action movies, don't just watch action movies. You need to be watching different kinds of clips, videos, films, series. You want to be listening to different accents, looking at different contexts, different genres, because all of that will give you a much wider range of language, which you're going to need to become a better speaker of English. So let's kick off first with action series, right? I mean, action series are great because it's often simple language and there's lots of visual support to help you learn. So apart from the Marvel series like Iron Fist, which is good, but very, very American, others that I like are Killing Eve, a British spy thriller with suspense, drama and unexpected twists in the plot. Also, His Dark Materials, which is um, a fantasy drama based on the books by Philip Pullman, recommended to me by my daughter. Next, we've got two sitcoms. And sitcoms or situational comedies are great because you've got very natural everyday English, cultural references, and you get to learn the sense of humour of English. I recommend Ted Lasso. It's the story of an American coach who comes to the UK to train a Premier League English football club and the hilarious adventures that come that come about from the culture clash between American culture and British culture. Then there's Mythic Quest. It tells the hilarious adventures of the staff of a company that creates the biggest multiplayer video game in the world. 
Next up, we've got the news and uh, two news programs, which I think are good because, well, the news gives you lots of rich vocabulary as well as idiomatic expressions. I would recommend Good Morning Britain, which is a light hearted look at the daily news or Panorama. And if you like investigative journalism, but not too sensationalist, that's for you. Next, a couple of drama series. And drama is good, again, for the natural conversation, but also the kind of colourful language you may get. Lots of slang as well, although do not use slang in IELTS speaking, but it's always useful to know. First of all, Little Fires Everywhere. Absolutely brilliant. This is uh, Reese Witherspoon, who is the head of a picture perfect family um, whose lives get turned upside down by the arrival of an enigmatic mother and her daughter. Then we've got The Handmaid's Tale, which is, I guess, the more horrific end of the um, drama spectrum. And this is about really a futuristic dystopia where the role of women is turned upside down. If you can bear it, go and watch it. It's great. Next, I would strongly recommend documentaries um, because they cover a wide range of topics and a huge range of vocabulary, as well as great ideas for your IELTS speaking. I would recommend The Social Dilemma. It tells you how social media really works. And also Cowspiracy, which tells you about the real culprit of climate change the elephant in the room that nobody is talking about. It's really worth watching. I do also recommend you go and check out Curiosity Stream. It's a paid for service. I think it's $20 a year, but some amazing high quality um, documentaries, well worth checking out. Finally, chat shows are brilliant because you get, again, natural conversation. It's everyday life, popular topics. I would recommend The Ellen Show, what more can I say? Pure genius. And The Late Show with um, Stephen Colbert. And I think The Late Show is nice. You can see interviews, very candid conversations with celebrities. And also, of course, Stephen Colbert's rather elegant wit and humour. That's it. Lots of TV series you can use to go and practice your listening and speaking skills and your top down and bottom up strategies. So remember, I think in order to really develop your listening and speaking skills, you need actually a combination of these top down and bottom up strategies. At different times, you may be using different ones, but use them both. I hope all of this helps and also have fun with the suggestions around the TV series. Go and explore something new. Look at lots of different types of programs to help improve your listening and speaking skills. And finally, remember Woodpecker Learning. What a great app, a place where you can find easy to access videos, some well-organized playlists that you can go and study with. And it's fun and exciting. And with all of those built-in tools to help you follow the transcript, practice repeating chunks, check words you don't know, access Netflix, come on. It's well worth checking out. The, the links are down below in the description. You can go and download the app for free. And let me know in the comments what you think of the app. What are you watching to learn English and practice your listening and speaking skills? Great. It's been a pleasure as always. I can't wait to see you very soon in the next video. Take care, my friend. See you later.